It's lunchtime with the pastors. Hello, it's lunchtime with the pastors at Hopeful Lutheran Church. Hi, I'm Pastor Blair Fields. It's good to see you here today. Waiting to see if anybody joins us. Well, hi there. Good to see some of you today. Hi, Terry. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Laurel. Uh, welcome to uh, Lunchtime with the Pastors from high atop Hopeful Heights in the old Parsonage, which is now the office building. And I'm the big man upstairs, Pastor Blair Fields uh, from Hopeful. Hey, I um, we just finished up Holy Week. Uh, that's why, hi, Lisa. Um, good morning, Laurel. That's why we didn't ha have a, a Bible study on Sunday. I just, I mean, on Monday, I just came on, had to have a day off. Uh, it was a long week, to say the least, a uh, long couple of weeks. In fact, it's been a long 30, 40 days, hasn't it? Um, so I wanted to uh, come to you today with some thoughts from quarantine. Well, maybe not so deep thoughts, but some words about uh, where is God in the midst of all this? Um, so I've been doing some reading and preparing for uh, to to talk today um i wanted to uh I, I have to share something i had a professor uh when i was on the grounds at university of virginia back in the early 70s and um his name was he was an associate professor his name was gilbert mylander gilbert is now a senior research fellow a professor at valparaiso university which is a lutheran um, university up in valparaiso indiana um, I remember Gil, he um, taught me a class on uh, C.S. Lewis, uh, wrote a book about it called Till We Have Faces, um, which was a very good book. I haven't read it since then, but I really enjoyed it when I did read it. Um, anyway, if Gilbert Mylander, if you're listening, I want to say hello. Yes, some of your students, even some of your bad students, uh, ended up uh doing some pretty incredible things i had classmates that went on to do some pretty incredible things so um anyway he wrote in a journal called first things he wrote a an, he wrote an article called not so deep thoughts from quarantine um now he wrote this uh on uh, april 9th and um he says, a couple of weeks now into sheltering in place, more or less, except when hungry, of acknowledging my membership in a high-risk demographic and of somewhat uncharacter uncharacteristic willingness to make sacrifices for the sake of others, I have begun to grow just a bit weary of the serious reading this pandemic has produced. Meditations on mortality have never been so abundant. Disputes by their very nature unresolvable in advance about what policies are best for our society are new every morning. You know that, you've heard it, you've read it. Um, he says, endless reflections appear about how life will have changed when the pandemic finally passes. Life is serious, he says, and we are all moved to share our deepest thoughts with others. But the truth is that not all of us can really grind out deep thoughts day after day. A few in a lifetime is more is a more reasonable quotient. Many of us, however, capable of not so deep thoughts, and perhaps some of them are worth sharing, if only as a way of forgetting for a moment all those other more ponderous ideas. Uh, and then he goes on to share some of his quote deep thoughts from quarantine. Um, he uh, one one of the things he notes in his uh, remarks is. Um, uh, is that he and his wife have started watching I Love Lucy episodes from uh, the beginning in order. Uh, I Love Lucy, which uh, was first broadcast 
oh, before I was even on this earth. Uh, the first program aired in 1951. Um, and uh, he, he notes that though they're not, the, 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 they would be judged today to be politically incorrect. Um, but he, he loves, he loves a good comedian and she was one of the queens of comedy. And um, and he's really enjoyed his time in quarantine. And and I hear people all the time talking about, well, I've been on Netflix and I've watched things like the Tiger King. Um, listen, folks, I have not watched it. I've heard what others have said about it. I don't think I even want to watch it. Um, that's not one of the ways I want to spend my quarantine time. I I tend to to uh, tune into. Uh, HD TV and dream of all the projects I should be doing during quarantine, but can't go to the store to buy the stuff to be able to do it. So um, eh, I'm living in a fantasy land right now. The things I could do to my house while I'm in quarantine. Uh, I'm just kidding. It. I, I don't have a lot really to do on my house. But so um, so what are some of your thoughts during this time of quote unquote quarantine? Uh, I, I uh, liked seeing some of your lists that Pastor Kelly asked you to write about, the five things that you're grateful for. What are you grateful today? I, I got to tell you, this it is here right now. It's absolutely gorgeous. A bit cold. Uh, Cindy, don't come back yet. <laughs> it's 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 a wee bit cold here. Um, but um, in fact, it's 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 stinking cold. I had to put sheets on some of my my plants last night to protect them from the freeze that we got. Uh, who would have thought that after Easter, we'd have such a, a few days in a row of having freezes at nights, but I probably should get on to some deeper thoughts. I want to, Oh, Oh yeah. I forgot to mention the, the one thing that, um, that my old professor Gilbert Mylander wrote, he said, one thing that social distancing clearly makes impossible is getting a haircut. Um, and he, goes, he says, of course, haircuts are not something I worry about much, worry much about any longer. Indeed, I've been, been glad not to bother with a comb for several years now. I got to tell you, I'm starting to get my COVID hair. It's uh, sticking out all over the place. Uh, several people have said, oh, just uh, get a pair of clippers and let your wife cut it. Huh. No. I remember once she cut my son Taylor's hair and had to take him to the barber to get it fixed. And that was just a, you know, buzzing all his hair off. Um, and the barber looked at her and said, don't do that again. So I, I'm not going to risk that, folks. Thanks for the kind thoughts that that uh, that I should be able to do that. But that's not going to happen. But right, we, we can't get our haircuts. I, I hear some of you talking about your COVID nails, um, your COVID roots. Um, there's, it, it's not a good time for that kind of stuff, but boy, I'll tell you what, I think those businesses are going to be, uh, just flooded as soon as they are able to open back up. And we are all anxiously awaiting an end to uh, a lot of this and being able to have things open back up. In the meantime, we live and, um, we, we're staying at home. I hope you're staying at home. Um. And I want to start where I left off uh, last week. Uh, it was last Wednesday when I shared an article by David French, a uh, columnist, um, and I have forgotten what paper he's with. Anyway, he's been around for a while. David French uh, wrote an article, and he took his experience from being a soldier in Iraq and the things he learned in Iraq and said, these are, are things that I have uh, followed all of my life with um uh that have that have helped him in everything that he has encountered so um let me go back to that list again i think i i think it's oh thank you kelly <laughs> that was a funny i just got a text from pastor kelly um and um let's see i need to turn my sound off there we go uh, let me go back to what, what he reminded me of. And he said, uh, while he was in the, in the war in Iraq, he, he learned this. He said, you need to find your band of brothers or sisters. Uh, and I think as I talked about it, I said, I, my, my band of brothers and sisters is for me, for the last 
you know, 40 years has been the church, uh, the, the body of, of believers, the community of faith. I, I'm not much into uh, the, um, the it's just me and Jesus movement. No, I think our faith is lived out in community with other people. And God has given us that community as a gift and, and a gift that, um, um, well, a gift that is in, in our country today is absolutely underutilized. But you need to find your band of brothers and sisters, so the people that, that, that um, lift you up, the people that hold your hand during times of trouble, the people that pray for you, the people that care for you, the people that, are, are, that miss you when you're not there, all of that the band, your band of brothers and sisters. He also said, find and pursue your purpose in, in life. Of all things, that's probably more important than anything else. I read a, a, a journal article yesterday about um, happiness, the equation for happiness written by Harvard Business School law professor. And uh, he basically pointed to the fact that, that faith and purpose uh, work, uh, those are the things that, that um, work into an equation that they actually developed for quote unquote happiness. Um, I, I would tend to call it living in the joy, living in the joy, happiness. You, you have your purpose, you have your friends, you have those gathered around you, and you are living your purpose. And, um, you know, in, in our vocations, the things that we do in life, uh, whether we work uh, on cars or, or whether we have, um, um, uh, we're working in a, a retail store or in a manufacturing plant or in logistics, whatever it is that we're doing, God has put us there for a purpose. And that purpose is uh, bigger than, than ourselves. It's a purpose that is, hey, we are a part of God's mission um, and, and we are a witness. Um, now I'm going to come back to that because that's that's going to be my main point today. Uh, the the third point. So first, let's find your band of brothers and sisters. For me, that's the community called the church. Um, number two, find and pursue your purpose. That is living out our faith in daily life. Uh, three, seek joy. That is living with the joy of knowing that in all things God is with us and he, he there's he's not against us. He's for us uh, in all things. Uh, God is for us. Um, and then, and then the last uh, point that he had was have faith. Well, that's why I'm here. Um, that's why you're here. That's why you're a part of the, the band of brothers and sisters, uh, wherever you are, because I know many of you, I'm seeing names and I know many of you are, uh, all around this country that have tuned into this or will watch it later. Um, you know, find your community of faith, have that faith in the God. Uh, who knew you before he knit you together in your mother's womb. Uh, that's that's um, those, those four things. One last time, find your band of brothers and sisters. For me, that has always been in the church for the last 40 some years. Uh, find and pursue your purpose. That is to live your faith, to find a way to live out, uh, to live in the grace that God has given you, to seek joy. Um, to, to find uh, God's, uh, to find happiness from God in all situations in life, in the good and in the bad. Uh, we still find that peace that passes all understanding. And, and the fourth thing was to have faith. Now, we have just finished up Holy Week uh, last week. It, um, I, I realized during all of it that, that probably for some of you that, um, we're uh, following our worship services online. I, I realize that some of you probably have never been to uh, all of the, the uh, Holy Week services. Uh, Holy Week just, um, I've, I've never understood how you can go to church on Palm Sunday and join in the parade and sing, uh, you know, Hosanna uh, in the highest, uh, that is Lord save us. And then you come back the next Sunday and it's all of a sudden, hey, he's risen from the dead. And a lot of people don't have a, a good sense of what happened in between. And so it was good to be able to be online with um, Holy Week services this year. Uh, they're very unique and, and special as you go through uh, that last week through the Passion of the Christ. Um, and it's such a joy and treasure to be able to lead a church through that season. 
uh, but it is very wearing. Uh, it it does. Um, it, it it's 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 a long week. Um, a lot of emotion. Uh, and I think for and what I was hearing from you all at home is that we we're in a period where we have a lot of emotions that are going on. We're living with a lot of emotions every day. I mean, people just uh, kind of break into tears at uh, different times, and you don't know really why you're broken into tears. Um, it, it might be something that you saw on uh, Facebook. It might be a video you saw. It might be something you saw on TV, but uh, do you find yourself uh, unexplainedly just suddenly kind of having an emotional um, release, um, crying and, and letting those feelings go? Um, and so, you know, that week is full of that kind, especially last week was full of that. Um, I got to watch uh, John Legend's uh, version of Jesus Christ Superstar on Sunday night. Also got to watch uh, Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. Um, two very, very emotional um, movies that, that um, really um, make the point of what Christ went through. Uh, for us and, and what he continues to do for us. And so there was a reading that uh, has um, kind of, it sticks with me. Uh, we read it on Saturday night. It was the, um, it was the, the Easter vigil and it was the New Testament lesson. I, I want to share that reading with you again. It was from Romans chapter six. So if you have your Bibles, you want to turn uh, to, oops, sorry, didn't mean to shake things up there. Um, it's in Romans chapter 6, um, and it's a passage that we sometimes use uh, in the proclamation of life uh, at funerals, um, memorial services. Um, the heading on uh, chapter 6 says, Dead to sin and alive to God. And, and that reading said this, What shall we say then? The beginning of the first verse. What shall we say then? Are we, are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means, Paul says. How can we who died to sin still live in it? By no means. Do you know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. I'll come back to that. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. That was... Uh, like I said, was read on um, uh, Saturday evening, right before the proclamation of the Gospel of Easter. Uh, and um, I think when we read it on Saturday night, I don't know if you were taken aback, we read it from um, from the message translation of the Bible. And so I'm going to go through it again. This time I'm going to be reading from, uh, um, from the message translation. Uh, this is chapter 6. This time I'm going to start with the third verse. Uh, that is what happened in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into the new country of grace, a new life in a new land. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we're lowered into the water, it is like the burial of Jesus. When we are raised up out of the water, it is like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light-filled world by our Father so that we can see where we're going in our new grace, our, our new grace sovereign country. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ, a decisive end to that sin-miserable life. No longer it sends every beck and call. 
What we believe is this, if we get included in Christ's sin-conquering death, we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him, but alive he brings God down to us. From now on, think of it in this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue, and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God, and that's what Jesus did. Those are incredible words about our life together in Christ. It's, it's about our struggle with sin each and every day. Uh, as Christians, we are reminded that as we face each new day, that we are called to enter into that struggle again against sin in every form and fashion that it finds itself in our lives and in our living. So uh, sin is a, is a battle every day. And, and even, even for, yes, your pastors have that battle with sin. Oh, my goodness. You, we, in a world where we really don't want to talk too much about sin because it's just not a good topic in, in uh, public settings, is it? <laughs> We don't want to go in and talk about our sin, but we start every public worship service that we have. If you've never noticed, we always begin with the confession of our sins and then the absolution spoken on behalf of Jesus into our hearts and lives for each and every day. It is a reaction that says to us, you are forgiven. All right. So what does that mean? What does that leave us to do? What does that have to do with anything that involves this time that we're in right now. Well, I want to I want to take you this way. You, you know, in our world, it's um, to have an opinion about something sometimes can be seen as a negative in this world. Um, to have uh, an understanding of things uh, eternal, of things temporal. Uh, to to um, to make any statement, any proclamation such as Jesus has died for my sins and has risen from the grave that I might have new life, that can be seen by some to be bigoted. It's a it's they it's a, what some people would call a subjective opinion, not a revealed truth. And so we find it difficult to talk about God, to talk about faith in a culture that says, hey, it's out of bounds to have um, to talk about any kind of revelation because it's all in the minds of our culture. It's all subjective. And therefore, you have everybody talking about everything as, as if everything in the world is OK. And when we know the difference. But here, here's the point. I don't want <laughs> to. I'm, I'm not here to go out and tell. Uh, my neighbor, hey, you've sinned and you've fallen short of the glory of God. I, I think they will eventually hear that. Or maybe they have heard that and just want to ignore it because it's um, it's a subjective opinion. So you can write it off. It's it's not it's not revelation. Um, so how do we talk about God in a world where things um, that we consider not subjective but objective are considered subjective in, in opinion? Uh, how, in other words, how do we talk about faith in the midst of this kind of culture? Well, here we are in a, a time that um, this time of pandemic, which I think is really an opportunity for you and I who live in our faith to be able to talk about um, to talk about what it means to live with God, to talk about what it means to have Jesus by our side, to talk about how that makes a difference in my life all right i'm I, I, the days of um you know shotgun evangelism where you go out and you just you just go out and scream at the corner hey the end is near you better get your life in order you you need to to talk to jesus now you need to say the prayer and to come to him and and that's that's what you ought to do in a time um like this that's that's not the way to do evangelism the way to to evangelism is to talk about 
when the opportunities are given to us to talk about what it means for God to be walking with me. How has that changed my life? How has that changed me? How has that changed me from the kind of person I could have been to the kind of person that I am? I, I know that might be a little confusing, but I remember uh, a parishioner I had uh, over in Indiana uh, who years ago who said, Pastor, you should have known me before I met Jesus. I said, why? He said, you wouldn't have liked me. He said, I was arrogant. I didn't care about anything except what I could get out of it. I didn't, I, I used people, he said. Um, I didn't, um, I wasn't a caring guy. I, didn't, I really didn't care about anything except for me. And uh, that was the focus of my life. And he said, and then, then I met this guy named Jesus. And um, you've seen me on this side of life. You have no idea what I was like. So I have to tell you, he said, I have to tell you what I was like in order that you understand the change that he, is, that he has made in me. It's not a new story, is it? <laughs> you can go right to Acts, um, the Acts of the Apostles, and you can read about the change that actually happened in someone like St. Paul uh, when he went from being a, a persecutor of Christians to a great voice of God's grace and mercy in his life and in the world and probably the greatest evangelist ever in the church. And, and I say that, that not lightly. I, I really do believe that he is like the greatest evangelist ever because he talks about uh, the things that are important to to living this life. He's very honest about sin, like you heard in that letter he wrote to the, the Romans. He, he, what he's saying is, hey, before God, before Jesus, I, I was the chief of sinners. I, 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 I could not have lived life any worse. But But look at what has happened to me now that I have been brought into Jesus through baptism. Look at what has happened in my life. Look at look at what that means to how I treat those around me. Look at what it means in terms of how I share my my story with those around me. And of course, he's one of the ones who does the greatest sharing of his story ever. Um, and, and and that's the that's the, my hope and prayer in this time is that. That there are plenty of people in the world. I mean, we we've known that the church uh, has been decreasing in America for a long time now. Uh, we were kind of at our pinnacle back when I was uh, a young, uh, well, a child, in in into the 60s and 70s, and the church was kind of at a high point. They were building. I know the Lutheran Church was building congregations all over the U.S. Uh, and then something changed, didn't it? Our culture changed. Um, but I think what changed is um, is this. Uh, I think for many of us, we don't feel it's proper to talk about faith. We don't feel it's proper to talk about politics because in a good society, quote, in a good society, you don't talk about faith and politics in good company. You don't want to ruin an evening. Well, and I, I think that, you know, <laughs> There are times and places for witness. And I think I think you have to look at how God is is opens a time. And if you start to share your story um, with how God has lifted you through uh, the rough places, how God has guided you through the valley of the shadow of death, um, how God has been by your side, as you go through uh, sharing that story, um, I truly believe God opens up those moments to be able to do that. Uh, and, and hey, I'm, I'm going to tell you, we don't feel adequate to do that because we know that we're not St. Paul, right? <laughs> we don't feel adequate. But listen to this. I think God, uh, as it says in the scripture, will give us the words. He will show us those moments that are right. It's like St. Paul going into a household and ending up baptizing everyone in the household uh, because the time was right. The question was raised. He answered and people responded. So um, I, I, I guess what I'm speaking of is really just very natural, um, very, a very natural 
uh, witness, um, not pushed on people, not not lorded over people, uh, a time to say, hey, I'm here. I've got my band of brothers and sisters. I have my joy. I have my purpose and I have my faith. And there's a time to say that to folks. And there's a time not to say that. You know, in Ecclesiastes, it says in everything, there is a time. Uh, there's a time for uh, rending and there's a time for sowing. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn. There's, uh, you know, we, we uh, as followers of Jesus, have to look at the signs to, to listen to the Spirit and let him guide us in our work for a, a very, very natural evangelism, a very natural way of reaching out, a very natural way of hopefully touching the hearts of others as our hearts have been touched. Another way to say that from the scripture is uh, we love because he has first loved us. Someone, someone shared the story with you. Maybe it's a good thing to think about when that story was shared in your life and, and how that happened for you. How did it come? Were you in the midst of, of great anxiety? Were you in the midst of trouble? I know at a time in my life, I, I was living without purpose, without uh, function, without friends that um, that were good friends, without uh, without a band of brothers and sisters. And, and, and it was in the midst of that time that I began to witness, began to see that uh, God did indeed bring people into my life at various times who had the same message. Hey, I, I love you because God has loved me. Uh, I'm here for you. You know, you want to talk? Let's talk. You don't want to talk? That's okay. Let's just sit in each other's company and be friends. Um, natural evangelism, natural, spirit-led, and and full of grace, full of grace. Our witness has to be full of grace um, because you, you you know we are all sinners. Uh, we all fall short. Uh, we're not, not a one of us is perfect. Oh, I know some would like to think they're perfect at one time or another, but but we're not. Um, I, I often have to look at myself and laugh at some of the things I've said or done that um, just uh, just weren't the right time, uh, weren't the right way. Um, so I'm really wanting you to think about this time that you're sitting at home as you're reaching out to friends. I mean, I'm connecting with some friends from high school that I haven't talked to in a while. Um, they've seen our church service online and just called me out of the blue. And we've uh, been communicating more on devices like this, like Facebook. Uh, I encourage you to look at exploring the all of the relationships around you and, and just to enjoy what God has given you in the midst of all of this, this time. Um, as hard as social distancing um, is, uh, as hard as that, um, because I'm a hugger, you know, I have to admit it, I'm a hugger. I, I, uh, I that's just part of who I am, and um, I love people. And um, th this, this is this is hard. It is hard. Uh, for those of you who live at home by yourselves, I, I, my prayers are for you. I, I mean, I know probably um, some of you might enjoy that, but it does. There is some loneliness, and and we're here for you too. Uh, so, you know, reach out and connect to people. Uh, touch another life with the life that God has given you and blessed you with. So that's kind of my thoughts for today. One last time, uh, and. Yeah, I know. I started with uh, my old professor talking about not so deep thoughts and just uh, being a little corny about things, but uh, finding a way uh, during this time to um, let's find a way to up our game of natural evangelism about ways to talk about our faith, about how God has blessed us, uh, about how God guides us, about how God loves us. Uh, about how God loves each and every, I mean, this is not something that God wants. God does not want a pandemic. That would be for sure. But then how does God use a time of pandemic to open doors, um, to open windows in people's lives that others might have an opportunity? Maybe now some might be willing to hear 
uh, how God has touched your life in significant ways. So natural evangelism, find, again, find your band of brothers and sisters, find and pursue your purpose. In other words, live your faith, seek out the joy that God gives you in life each and every day. And it might be from the smallest of things to big things, uh, but seek God's joy and then to have the faith that God has put in your heart. Um, and and that's that's where I want to leave it today. Just remember those things, live those things, uh, continue to walk with each other. Um, I I, uh, I do find um, the one thing about this time is is trying to talk to all the people I've been trying to talk to in many and various ways. I I just find uh, uh, messages. Uh, on Facebook, I find it on Instagram, I find it on Twitter, I find it um, in uh, I find it in phone calls. I sp have spent a lot of times, a lot of time in phone calls. And when you're on one phone call, you can't do other phone calls. But um, you know what I mean. I mean, it, it feels like uh, some in some ways it's kind of overwhelming, but in other ways it's very um, invigorating that God gives us the opportunity to share of our lives and hearts and care. Um, don't forget the pantry of hope always needs food. We really encourage you just to, just to drop by directly and put a bag of food into the pantry of hope out there in the parking lot. Um, we've been having people, uh, put food in it two or three times a day. Uh, and, and yet it still gets empty because the need has been so much greater. I have talked to, uh, master provisions and I've talked to, um, offered, um, our facility to the city of Florence and to the county of Boone that if they need to do anything uh, here to to uh, reach out to the hungry, we'll let you know if, if we get involved in a project like that. I, I, I thank uh, Hopeful for being able to do some nice gifts uh, that were given to Master Provisions and Go Pantry and, and uh, a foster care agency um, to, to be able to help people in times of need like this. And, and we will continue to look for ways to serve and to reach out. For now, I just want to close with a prayer today. And uh, you'll see Pastor Kelly tomorrow. And then um, we look forward to seeing you in church on Sunday. Um, hey, I have to mention one thing. I, I know that we get notes uh, during our live service time about how either uh, things were buffering or the picture froze or or um, the sound drops out or um, whatever. Here, here's, here's what I want to tell you. If you watch the service and you have a lot of interruptions like that, uh, I would, if I were you, I would just kind of turn it off for now and then uh, go back uh, an hour later and you'll be able to watch the broadcast with hopefully no glitches. No, uh, I mean, what's happening is everybody, ah, oh, Imagine all the churches in this country are doing Facebook live worship services or streaming. And so uh, bandwidth gets um, gets crunched out there in the, the world wide webs. And, and so that causes things to slow down. It's not it's not the production on our end. We're just sending out a signal. And uh, when it gets out there into the the tubes on the Internet, you know, it, it, it gets you know, it gets interruptions and glitches and. What, what I find is that if you go back and watch it later, uh, things tend to, tend to be really cleaned up and you get to see it in a much better, a much better way. Uh, we do it live because, um, you know, it's, 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 it's just something about the time, the hour and, uh, doing it at that time is, is, uh, still important to me, uh, and to others. Um, and so, uh, sometimes it's the bandwidth in your neighborhood. Sometimes it's the bandwidth in this neighborhood. Sometimes it's the bandwidth somewhere in between us that causes all those glitches and stuff. It's it's not us. So just go back and watch them later. Like if I if you had buffering today during this talk, go uh, come back and watch it in a half an hour. You'll be able to see it without all of that. We uh, love you. We miss you, and we look forward to that day when we get to uh, come back together. Um, I, I I know we'll probably still have to be observing some social distancing, so it's not going to be all hugs and stuff, but it will be great to to be with you and to have your 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 
bodies here uh, gathered together in the community that God has given us. And so we we all look forward to that time, uh, that day. And oh, there's going to be some rejoicing, um, much rejoicing, a, a lot of heart, a lot of soul. Uh, and we look forward to that time when we can gather together again. So until then, we hope that our uh, doing this on Facebook Live is helpful to you and to those around you. So let's close with a prayer today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those this day who are on the front lines of this of fighting this virus. We, we thank you for the EMTs and the doctors and nurses and police and all who are, are dealing with the patients who are um, being transported and trying to protect themselves at the same time. We pray for them on the front line that they would not be infected that they would not uh, that that you would put a sure defense around them but this this disease is is complicated and, and and it's 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 there lord help us to fight it in the best ways that we can thank you for the doctors nurses therapists and especially the respiratory therapists who are kind of the front lines of a new a pneumonia like disease uh, they're 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 right there in the midst of it. And so we pray for them. We pray for our hospitals. We pray for our healthcare system. We pray for our whole country. We pray for uh, the state of New York that is in the city of New York that is dealing with this in such a horrific way. So continue to bless those who work in it to protect them, guide them, keep them safe, their family safe. Be with all of us in our, our isolation and in our social distancing from others that we uh, look forward to a day when we shall be uh, gathering together again with, in the midst of your love and your compassion for us. Lord, visit all homes that need you today. Touch their lives. Use us to be a natural witness to them of your presence in the midst of all that they are, are suffering. Be with, with the teachers in our counties. Um, you know, our teachers at home uh, who are trying to teach uh, through Zoom, but also our teachers at home our parents who are trying to to become teachers and to educate our children. Uh, we ask that you bless their work and their time, uh, prosper it to, to bring good from the midst of this. And so in all things, Lord, we believe that you do bring the best, uh, uh, the best uh, for those who love you. And so we just ask that you continue to, to, to bring us that best in, in little ways and big ways as you watch over and keep us all. We pray for our world, our nation, our county, our city, wherever we are, but especially we pray for our homes, that they might be homes acceptable to you. And this we pray in the name of your son, Jesus, the bringer of all life. Amen. Well, thank you for being here today. I'm sorry I went a little bit over again, but you know, that's me. Um, sometimes I get talking and forget my where I am and I just keep going. And um, so I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning uh, here at Hopeful Lutheran and uh, have a blessed week. Bye-bye and have a great day.